Hello everyone, my name is Isabel and my daughter Nurse is here. And like Fred said, we were going to court also because we said that we were not under the statute law that says anyone, the law in Australia says it's compulsory to vote and we said no, it's not compulsory to vote for Aboriginal people. So we refused to vote and then we went to court. And then we went to court to prove that they did not have a jurisdiction. The Commonwealth of Australia and the Colony State of Queensland did not have any jurisdiction over us. And we used their laws, their statute laws, back against them as well as the Constitution to prove that they did not have any jurisdiction over us, that we had our own sovereign jurisdiction. Nearly worked, they were going to hand us up to the High Court. We nearly got there. They were going to make the order to vacate, but they used another case against us. <coughs> But besides that, what we did was we did not go into their courts under their statute law, which proves they have a jurisdiction over us. We actually rebutted their statute laws, their parliamentary acts, and we said it doesn't apply to us. And of course, that's when we went in and proved that they had no jurisdiction and we had our own jurisdiction. Okay, so they ruled against us, but we're still not giving up. So what we've done is, we used Michael's and Fred's kit and we did a declaration of independence. And this is really important. When America did their declaration of independence, they did it to the Privy Council. It was a legal precedent. It was a legal precedent for us in this country. The Privy Council. Now, the way they came in, we had to go right back to the beginning and we had to look at America because America set a legal precedent, a legal precedent for us. So we looked at how they sent their colonial ships to America, because they were colonies. And when they went there, they sent with them the uh, Magna Carta, the various, what was it, the Act of Settlement. They called, this important word again, Michael, instruments, instruments of muniments. But then America did something. They declared a Declaration of Independence to the Privy Council. This is really important because they... When they came here, they were in deep shit. They couldn't use those same muniments when they came here. So what they did was, under Admiralty law, when a ship pulls into a port, the captain of the ship has to come out and declare his, de his cargo under uniform commercial code. He has to say what's on board. They did that to us Aboriginals. And, of course, they gave it to us. Well, we didn't give a shit. We don't know what, you know. It meant nothing to us, so we just... It's nothing. That's when they said we're savages. And they used an instrument called... Terra nullius, that word again, instrument. Okay, that's how they got us. Then they went back, we, in, went, through our research, um, we found out how then they came here and, and put their power over our power. And they have this, we have this, we call it the evil trinity. Over in England they have the crown, the queen or the king, whatever it may be, the British Parliament and the Privy Council, which is where their judiciary is. Those three operate together, always together. That's how they have power. That's what they did in America, but America declared independence against it in the Privy Council, which is what we were supposed to do, but they've stopped us. They stopped us through an act called Privy Council Limitation of Appeals in 1968, but that's okay. We can come back to that later. So, okay, what happened in America is very important to, to us here. Now... The way they set up power here over us was through that evil trinity, the Crown, the Queen or the King, whatever it may be, the British Parliament and the Privy Council. Now in 1968 something amazing happened. There was a referendum and we all know what the referendum was about. It was an alteration of the Constitution in brackets Aboriginals because the people said there was a civil rights movement going on around the world. And the civil rights movement reached Australia and people sent all those poor black fellas down there on the missions. They should have rights, they should become citizens. So there was a referendum, and like Fred said and Kylie, before that we were not included in their constitution. They could not make laws for us. They couldn't because we weren't included in the constitution. We're still not to this day, as a matter of fact. People think we are, but we're not. <laughs> they still can't make laws for us. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is there's only one way that you can alter the Constitution. It's through a referendum, through Section 128 of their Constitution, an alteration 
bill gets sent up. And um, here in this place here, the House of Reps and the Senate, they look at it and there's always three bills. One bill for the House of Reps, this place, one bill for the, ha the Senate, and one goes over to her, the Queen, sitting in council. She doesn't sit in council anymore. She's never sat there since that referendum. She's just never, ever gone back to sit there, amazingly enough. They never tell people that one either. So what happened was they had a, a referendum and it was the most successful referendum ever in the history of this country. It was 90.3 something percent of the majority vote, which is a mandate. A mandate is the wishes of the people. And that could be a hard thing for the Queen. If the bill, there's three bills, one stays in this house for 30 days for the politicians to look out. The other bill sits in the Senate for the same period of time and then the other goes to her to sit in reserve for anything up to two years because she's a very busy woman. She's got all these colonised places to look out for. So she may not get around to looking at that bill straight away. But so it sits in reserve until she does. These bills are very important because they're what they call prima facie evidence. Prima facie evidence. Really important. We've been looking for these bills and we can't find them. No one can find them as a matter of fact. They magically disappeared. We want to look at those bills because, as we said, those bills are prima facie evidence. You can build a case in an international court based on those bills but we can't find those bills. They've done the Disappearing Act. Now, if Parliament is a Parliament of record, how can those bills disappear? It's, it's a Parliament of record. They have to keep it. If something like that happens in another country, other countries, other politicians jump up and down and call it um, fraud, they call it corruption. How come those words don't get thrown at this country? Other countries... Um, use those strong wording against their politicians and even including their leaders and their leaders go to the international courts and get tried and get sent to jail and some of them even get death, the death penalty. This country is very good at protecting itself and very good at telling lies, telling lies not to just Aboriginal people but to white people, non-Indigenous people and to ethnic people. In fact, what we say in Queensland is they're dumbing the country down, they're dumbing everybody down. They don't want anyone to know their rights. So they just get... They basically just dumb people down. So what we've been doing is a lot of research. We research in here, the House of Representatives. We've been researching Hansard extensively. We've researched the Constitution extensively. We've gone back over to their country. We've researched their Hansard, the House of Commons. We've researched the Privy Council. We have done so much research. We're just about getting really good at it now. So we understand how they came here and put their law above our law and said that we didn't have law. But Mabo too proved that we did have a law, a customary law. And that was the important thing. We go back to the beginning. When they sent the ships to America, the reason why they sent those instruments of muniments was to prove a customary law, that they had a law. They were taking their law from England and taking their law, their customary law, their, their traditions. And their traditions was the Magna Carta. They, what were they? There was the Magna Carta, the Act of Settlement, and there was three main documents, Michael. And that, that proves traditions and customary law. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. But, but a thing happened, it was called a legal precedent when America came back and said, no, we don't, we don't accept that, that's, that's for over there. So they, they took... King George III on in the Privy Council and they said, no, it doesn't apply to us. And of course they made the Declaration of Independence, which is very important to us. That's what we were supposed to do. That was our legal right to go to the Privy Council and do the same thing. But of course they stopped our access to the Privy Council. They stopped it in 1968 with the Privy Council Limitation of Appeals Act. And then they did it again after, just before Mabo, as soon as Mabo handed the paperwork in, they said, oh, oh here it comes. So then they gave us those Australia's Acts in 1986. And that's when they just stopped all access to the Privy Council over there. They shut our access down. Because they know, they know, this whole... They know that we have a legal right to go and fight in the international courts to get our country back and our land back and our law back. But they've used their statute laws. This is another interesting... They use their statute laws to protect themselves. But there's another law in the Westminster system called the common law. The Westminster system is a very old system. They think it's perfect, but it's not. It's based on the common law and statute law. Statute law comes from the Parliament, so it comes from the Imperial Parliament in England, the Parliament Acts, Acts of Parliament, that's statute law, 
then over here, the colony states, the parliaments of the states, Parliament of Queensland, Acts of Parliament, that's statute law, and then at the federal level, we have a federal parliament here, and we get parliament, parliamentary acts, Acts of Parliament, which is statute law. So we have three levels of statute law, imperial from the British Parliament, the colony states, and the federal level, and they impose that upon us. But you know what? They can't because their own constitution says they can't. But besides their statute law, there's another law called the common law. This is the one that protects us. And this is the one that protects her sitting over there, the Queen. She doesn't really operate under statute law because she's a monarch. She gets her power from the common law and that's where she gets all her prerogatives to go and just say, um, pardon people from death sentences, life internments. She has a power that she gets from the common law. And we need to use that common law to protect ourselves. They've dumbed everyone down in this country and they keep saying to us, you can't do nothing, you can't do nothing because there's statute law out there keeping you all down. What we've done through our research is we found out the common law still does apply and we need to use that common law just like they did in America when they went to the Privy Council and made their Declaration of Independence and what we are supposed to do. The common law applies to us through our customary law. So when Michael talks about, he's going to talk a little bit later about setting up our law, our customary law, that's really important because the common law, their common law, recognises our common law, the customary law. We don't need their statute law. Their statute law is nothing to us. There is no jurisdiction. That's how they put jurisdiction here, through their statute law. We've proved to them. We've told them your statute law does not apply anymore. So what we did was we used Fred's kit and we did a declaration of independence and we sent it over and where we come from we actually neighbouring to Seth and um, Jeremy, they're a dingy wind, the Nudgeon, we're like a, uh, they're the, the mother tribe, the mother low tribe that we come under. So we've declared independence and we've just gone and um, told them and we've told, well we've basically told them. You, you never ever go to the politicians. Politicians are elected by a popular vote. The people that you go to the tell is the Queen's representative who has executive powers. So at the federal level it's the Governor General Cosgrove, at the state level it's the Governor, and for us in Queensland it's Paul de Jersey. He's the executive, he acts on behalf of the Crown. And then you also go to the Attorney General at the federal level, we'd let him know, and the, and the Attorney General at the state level. You don't worry about premiers, you don't worry about politicians. They get voted there by the people, they're nothing. You go to the executive who signs off, he sends all the writs down, all, anything that happens here happens by a writ from the executive. Um, so that's why we always let the executive know. When we do our letters, we say, you don't have any jurisdiction here, you cannot stop us. So we sent them some letters and we said, there's no jurisdiction, we want our national parks back because guess what, we're gonna go and move into them. They got our letters, they sent three Black Hawk helicopters to clean the national parks out. They sent the army up from Townsville, over at Barracks. We said, get your mob out, get your forestry workers out, get them all out. We take, we're taking it back, we're going to move on country. They can't stop us, they cannot stop us. Then we also said, every year you do have a, you have a treasury report and the treasury report by your statute law says that you have to let every other government department know what you've done, how you've accrued through revenue, how you fill the coffers of the Treasury with all the revenue. And for us up there in Queensland, it's mining, it's all the fishing licences, the permits. And we said, we let them know that they had to stop issuing permits for mining, fishing, da 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 da, whatever, 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 exploration permits. They have. We said, no new, the ones that exist, leave them, but you're not going to issue any more new ones. They've stopped. We told them, you don't have jurisdiction. We said to them that you are robbing us, the people. We said, we have a jurisdiction here and you are robbing us. You are using our resources economically for your benefit and gain and you're robbing us and you don't even tell us. And we said, from now on, you have to let us know through your treasury report every year because that's what they're doing. They're robbing us. They're using our resources as economic gain and benefit. The kind of 
cooperating, but it's a bit shaky, which is why where we come from, what Seth and Jeremy is doing is very important because we need to link to make ourselves stronger from them. The other thing we did was we said that they owe us reparations because they've been robbing us blind by using all their economic resources, <coughs> using those resources to borrow and lend overseas. And we said, it has to stop. Um, so what we did was we let them know that they owe us reparations. Um, they, they did get back to us, but it was a strange letter. We think it's entrapment. We think that they're going to try and entrap us to get us on bribery. <laughs> We're not bribing them. We're just telling them they owe us reparations for all the theft and the robbery that they've done to us. We haven't answered back to them. We have to be very careful because we don't want to seem to be committing bribery. We're not bribing the colony state of Queensland. We just want our reparations that they stole. But it was a very strange email that they sent to us. We haven't responded, but we have to be very careful. But as a matter of fact, under international law, they do owe us reparations. Their treasury is full of all the revenue that they gained from using our resources, and we've told them in no uncertain terms. So we're still going along. We're getting little successes, little gains and little successes, but it's important that the neighbouring tribes like Gadinji can't you know, do what they're doing so that we're empowered. There's an empowerment going on up there in Queensland, so they just can't knock us out. Because like what you said before, they'll use us against each other to knock us down. Um, What's the old saying? Divide and conquer. Divide us and conquer us. So we need to unite. And that's basically where we are today. Um, before you get up, brother, I just want to share one little thing. Me and this fellow over here, we were in Brisbane. And we was in this room with this old barrister guy. And um, we were talking about something else. And we looked on the wall. And he had this thing on the wall. And it was a little map, and it was one of these things here on top of the map. And we asked him, what was it? He said, well, that's our crest. That's our, our right to our land. He said, that there, he said, I can fly a flag on top of my house of what's on top of that, that, that little thing. He said, the only people that are allowed, that can come into, this, into my house, he said are the Queensland police. Nobody else has rights to come into his house. And we started talking. And we said, well, why is that? He said, because what's on the wall is what we called heraldic law. And when they came to Australia, they also brought heraldic law with them. And heraldic law was before common law. And this is a funny thing. We were sitting at home. And there was these two aeroplanes come, one flying around the skies and one landed, see? And all these people got out of the aeroplane and Kylie was there. Because our house is right near the airstrip, right? And she's looking through the binoculars at who, what white fellas are getting out of this plane, see? She's looking there and there's these fellas taking photos. There's a fella there taking photos of the house. And we've got our flag flying right on the top of our house, right? And, um... Anyhow, so a couple of days later, she saw this fellow on TV and it was a Premier of New South Wales. So the new Premier of New South Wales was standing at our place taking photos of our house with our flag on it. Right? And this fellow said, that comes through our law and custom of our clan. This old barrister was saying. So when we were talking to Michael, he's saying, well, what he's taken... He's taken photos because you are exercising your heraldic right under heraldic law. Your right under heraldic law. So that's why it's important for us to give flags and to fly the flag on your place of government or on your place of, of administration or anything like that. That's why the flags are flying on top of that big place there. Right? So that was just a quick little thing. And, and in terms of the independence, I think... The most important thing with your independence, if you're going to declare, you have to declare that you're a continuing independence. You're continuing independence and statehood. Because they've never taken it away from us. Okay? So, I'll, with that, I'll hand it over to Brother Murumuia and... All right, sorry, Uncle. Yeah, just 
talk about uh, Queensland law and um, how the uh, fraudulent act of parliament in Queensland over the Brickalo call. And um, we talked to Michael about that earlier and the same things happening in uh, New South Wales where they transferred the uh, uh, state forest over into um, the Brickalo call from New South Wales. It's registered in the uh, United States underneath the Crown. So uh, I'm just wondering how you, <coughs> how you propose to uh, deal with that because it's a, if it's a, not a, a legal parliament in a sense and uh, it's a corporation, uh, I think there's, there needs to be some debate in relation to how, how Aboriginal people are going to deal with it in terms of where you're going. And the other question was that you did mention Okay. Well, the one about the Briglow Corporation, can we take that on notice and discuss it after lunch? Yeah, no um, look, people are going to make decisions, and there are our mob out there that are going to be all about money, yep. right? And they're, they're going to they're going to side with their fellows, and they're going to you know. And I, I I was listening to that fellow that was up there from Western Australia, that Ken White up there in the yep. that house up there, and on TV the other night, you know, and he said. When the lady asked him, he said, she said, is there any opposition to this recognition? You know? He said, no. First word was no. But then he corrected himself. He, he actually thought about it and he corrected himself. He said, yeah, but there's a sovereignty movement and, and the, the treaty movement and stuff like that that are in opposition to it. Right? But, he, but he sort of just tried to, you know, push it to the side. And, uh, but yeah, I think um, we, can, we can do that. But... We can come back to that Briglow Corporation because there's been a few people that have done research on that. Um, I'm, I'm conscious that we're going to have to go to lunch. Um, so... Okay. So I'm conscious that we're going to have to go to lunch very, very soon, but I want to give my brother here a chance to... You want to wait till after lunch? Okay, so if we can wait till after lunch... Fred, one very quick comment. I've commissioned a document on the continental common law of First Nations people through the University of Tara, Malaysia, in Kedah. So it's at arm's length to this country and totally independent and irrefutable. We have a lot of PhD candidates who are running that document as we speak. And we have also uh, an approach to the United Nations on the human rights aspect of issues uh, for our people. Your allodial right and I know Michael will expand on this word, allodial, and just keep that word in your mind, that your allodial right is to everything below the ground, to the core of the earth, and everything above the earth to the stars. Our continental common law is much, much older than any other law on this earth, because we've been here since the beginning of time. And that is the way we are going to use that document will research the laws that are common to all of our First Nations groups around this land, and that will form the basis of our continental common law. 
and that is what brings us unity. We don't need treaties, we don't really need constitutional recognition, don't need any of that white fella stuff, don't need it. Right? You already have it, you just have to exercise it. That's right. Let's have lunch. Yeah. Okay, well, let's have lunch. There's an elevator out there as well for people to get down, so... Um, can somebody tell me what time it is, please? Listen, can, can everybody okay. just make a small contribution to lunch yeah. today, please? I was going to... That would be fantastic. Just whatever you can afford. Okay, so we need to come back here at 2 o'clock to start.